Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to my world. And boy, we couldn't do it without the Hall of Famer, the greatest professional wrestler of all time, uh, the Lord's gift to professional wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, how are you, man? Oh, Conrad Thompson. How we doing, man? Coming off the holiday weekend, Labor Day, back in the home saddle. When I cranked up the computer here, and I, I realized it had been a bit. We did our first ever YouTube um, special the other night, but I was doing that from uh, the beautiful Sheraton in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, prior to that, I was on the bird. So it's good to be back home. Good to be lakeside, sitting in the uh, My World Studios, also known as my office. But um, no, glad to be here. Conrad, I don't even really know where to start because you've got a ass whooping coming up in a few days. Oh, will you stop? It, hush, hush. This is my opening dialogue here. I will get to you in a minute, pal. Uh, you and Joe Park always like to chime in. But no, football's upon us. SEC took it on the chin uh, on a couple of the games. Roll Tide look well. Vols look well. It's that time of year. But, Conrad, I will say this. I am grateful. And uh, what a two weeks it's been. I don't even mm, – I don't know. And we keep on rolling. So, Conrad, how are you, pal? How's yeah. life treating you? I saw your post, and I always think it's so cool. And and you uh, – said this and I'll, I'll say this Jeremy Borash hit the parent lottery yes. and you put it in those words uh, big lair uh, out there in knee deep water very cool so happy for them so happy uh, belated Labor Day weekend pal how hey, are you man I'm great as you and I are recording it is Labor Day and uh, boy our lakes are getting busy out there and we're going to have some fun but we're going to start our day off together talking a little wrestling and man, there's so much to cover, but before we get started, we do need to acknowledge that this is the last time we get to see blowhard Jeff Jarrett with a grin on his face on my world, because next week he's going to have his head down. He's going to have his shoulders slumped. He's going to have a whole bunch of excuses. It's going to be pitiful is what it's going to be. And I hate to see it. Because when I see the lineup of everything we're doing at adfreeshows.com's top guy weekend this weekend in Chicago, I know on Saturday, mere moments before you go stomp a mud hole and walk it dry at the now arena, tickets are on sale now at AEWTIX.com, you're going to walk in to that arena that night, a known loser, because you and I are going head to head with PlayStation 5's NCAA football. You've been talking all kinds of trash about your Tennessee volunteers. You ain't ready for what mm. Milrow and the rest of the Crimson Tide are going to put upside that dome. It's going to be bad. And here's the deal. I'd like for us to go to a two shot again. I need to know okay. in a loud and clear voice. <clears throat> are you yellow? <laughs> I mean, look at your hair. Is that where we are? Are you, are you the color of your hair? Are you, le are, are you gonna, are you gonna ante up? I'm willing to put something on the line. I'm calling you out. This is not planned. I'm willing to make a bet. Ooh. Are you willing to make a bet or are you too yellow? Double oh. J. Oh, well, two things come to mind. One, since it's labor day and the kids are out of school. I just left a very heated conversation with my man, Code Dog. Okay. I should have brought him on the podcast to let him get it on there. And he I, he calls me the last outlaw, the king of the mountain, the final balls. I dominate him in Madden and college football. And just last night, as we're playing each other in a big showdown, he said, Dad, what team do you want to play with? And I chose... So I could do a little scouting. I chose the Crimson Tide. You played as Alabama? I played as Alabama. I wanted to get a feel. Look, it ain't my first rodeo. You've got to get in the moment. You got to understand the schemes. And that that's the way, you know, it's like a practice squad that I kind of looked into it, looked under the hood, and 
they're good. That's all I'm going to say. And so when we do that little teeter uh, deal about even teams against the Vols, we need to get some rules of engagement cleared wait, up. Wait, 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 yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get rules of engagement Wait, wait, wait. we got to figure out what time of day we're playing, what stadium we're playing Oh, in. wait, wait. Let me go ahead and give you that. I don't even want to negotiate it. I want to acquiesce. I'm going to whoop your ass in Neyland Stadium. Oh, okay. The okay. Alabama Crimson Tide are are ranked higher in the game. Yes. Uh, on the top 25. So it's only yeah. fair. I'll admit that it's only fair that Alabama goes on the road. So you have the home field advantage and I'll even let you pick the weather conditions. Now I would prefer it to be clear, but if you want it to be partly cloudy, that's fine. I'll leave all that at your feet. What about rain or snow? Well, if you, I don't know how often it snows in Knoxville, but we'll give it a shot. (laughs) It's East Tennessee. You never know what happened, but that little toggle button where it plays teams that are even. That's that's that goes the rankings and that kind of evens the playing field and it just comes down to Connie and Double J's skill level. So, do you want to have the? I said you could have the home field. What no, else? no, 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 no. You you can make it where teams are even because you're ranked. Bama's like ninety one or ninety two in the game, and UT's like eighty four, eighty five, something along those lines. I believe. So, so you don't gonna, you don't have faith in your team. I'm, I, I, I don't want you to have any excuses. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. I just want to remind everybody that we made a bet on this very program last year that said that the loser had to attend the winner, the game next year, this year with the winner all decked out. You're supposed to be painted up and all that. And I haven't tried to hold your feet to the fire about what you owe me in October. (laughs) I mean, if you want to go double or nothing here, that's fine. I'm, I'm game to do whatever. So, so what am I going to bet? That's well, kind of what I've been thinking about. about that, Jeff, and here's what I'd like to suggest. Oh, here we go. Silva, you're up to this BS. No, I I, no, no. This is a secret. Cause I knew it would leak if I, if I put it out there, but you know, my friend, easy E, he likes to say that in order to have a good story, in order to have a good match, you've got to have stakes. There's got to be something on the line. And I'm not talking about the kind of stakes you get it out back. I'm talking about something worth fighting for and boy, personal issues, draw money. I heard there was a sign that said that once in Memphis and I'm thinking out loud here, what if, cause I'm thinking, what could I put on the line? Yeah. And I think to myself, self, what if I lose? And what I put on the line is if I lose the king of the mountain gets to shave my beard. Holy smokes. So I'll let you shave my beard or Cody can shave my beard, whatever you prefer. Manscaped. Well, come on. And when I win, I know where you think I'm going, but you told me pretty loud and proud. I keep this hair long in case I can get a payday south of the border in a hair match. I'm not going to mess with your money. That's foul. I get it. Oh, where are you going with this pal? But I heard once in Memphis that old Mr. Dundee put his wife's hair on the line. (laughs) And if you're thinking what I'm thinking and I'm thinking what you're thinking, what if I put my beard on the line against the queen of the mountains hair, your thoughts, buddy. You're married. And yep. I'd say she's pretty spunky as well as the queen's pretty spunky. So we've literally seen them be spunky together on <laughs> Rick Flair's last match. It, it fooled, right. that, fooled the hell out of Bubba Ray Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure. I want to speak for the queen on that. That's a pretty heavy step. Um, uh, we'll settle ben, for your hair if you want. No, 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 no. Ben, listen, we got to figure this out. Are we going to decide this today? No, you can think about it. You can marinate on it. Game time, because I'd love to get some of the top guys engaged in this. And let's figure out. Well, here's another question. Do you think any of the top guys would put their hair up? We should come up with something. And you know what I'm not scared to do? I'm not scared to let the world take a look at myworldpod.com. We could live stream this ass whooping if you want. I I like that. We need to look over in the comments. uh, Like, uh, who's uh, Coach Rosie? 
uh, Josh, uh, you know, folks, uh, you know, Coach Keith, is there any of these guys, would they might want to put their hair up? Uh, wait, wait, why are they putting their hair up against my beard? That's not why this, we're not doing that. They're team double J they're my world listeners. We may. Yeah. I mean, all right. They, well, I'll meet you right smack dab in the middle. What if I win, uh, we have Andrade give you a Canadian destroyer. <laughs> Mm-mm. Maybe. Mm-mm. All right. Listen, we're going to have some fun at top guy weekend. If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Check us out over at adfreeshows.com. And Jeff, I know you probably missed this last week. You've been traveling all over the world, but I can't believe this is real. We just passed the six year anniversary of the very first all in, which is actually the very first time you and I got to work together. It was September 1st, 2018. And there was somebody else who was there and they recently sat down with me over at adfreeshows.com. I had a chance to sit down with new Japan pro wrestling's Michael Craven. Oh, wow. And we talked a little bit about new. He's no longer with the company, so he can speak freely and boy, he shed a lot of insight and I've got a clip for you right now, Jeff. Here. Did you think at any point, Hey, this, uh, this might mean these guys aren't long for new Japan. I mean, did you leave there with any uncertainty or any doubt or was that not even crossing your mind at that point? I knew something. I knew we we're going to lose some of the talent, but I didn't think we we're going to lose all of them. I figured that they were going to start up their own promotion. I figured that we would probably lose access to the ROH talent, but I didn't think we we're going to lose Kenny. I figured that Kenny was going to stay. We're going to give strong offers to some of the talent. And I figured we were good. Um, dialing it back, I, I was staying at the same hotel that the Bucks were at. Met them in the elevator a few times. There was no bad blood between me or them. They're really nice guys, really friendly. Um, I had a very positive experience with everybody. So um, I reported back to New Japan saying this was really big. Um, didn't really take it as seriously as I would have. Um, They said, well, they'll start their own promotion, but how long is that going to last? We'll see them all back here soon. Oh, wow. So they didn't figure that it was going to be as big as it was. That's August. That's September. That's the first week of September. So that tone changed pretty fast. Catch the whole conversation. It's more than two hours long. Fascinating. You you never hear from people inside the office at New Japan. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and, and I was going to say for the My World listeners that may not know, Michael, uh, we got a relationship. Yours is better with his. What was his official title? When General he manager. So he was fourth from the top. So this would be like sitting down with yeah, a big, Bruce Pritchard today. Big. Yeah, it's it's fascinating that you boy the behind the. I want to watch that Conrad. Um, damn, that's that's interesting to go back in time. And yeah, I saw the stuff online about six year anniversary and. The first thing that came to my mind, unbelievable how time flies. I'll just remember it like it was yesterday. Nick Aldis giving me a call. I mean, there's so many things that went into that weekend. Just the, the star cast and fight, and me and you get to work together, and the different folks that old faces I'd seen, new faces, walking in that lobby, uh, the buzz that was going on around it. But Nick saying, hey, man, you've been instrumental in my career. Uh, I'd like for you to walk out with me at the beginning of the match, which I just thought was a cool honor. Um, and the story of Cody and my relationship through the years with dusty. And that is six years ago, Conrad, that, that is amazing. But the, the, the ad free conversation that through the lens, wow. Of, of, of new Japan, Conrad, that's where I'm, um, I'm kind of bouncing all over the place, but you think about where they were sitting at bucks, Cody, well, just really the ROH relationship, Omega, um, they had a lot invested in that crew. So hearing his perspective, I bet you hit him with all kind of questions, Conrad. I know you that, wow, I'm fascinating, fascinating. I'm going to have to watch that one, Conrad. Adfreeshows.com has it up right now. It goes more than two hours and there's something for everybody at adfreeshows.com. Just last week, I sat down with Tully Blanchard and we talked about their fabulous series of matches that he and Arn Anderson had against demolition in the WWF. 
You may recall it was Arn and Tully that ended the longest reign in tag team history in the history of the WWF, like 478 days or something like that. It was a record that would stand until new day broke it in the more modern era. But on that match, it was a two out of three falls on NBC on Saturday night's main event. I don't think Tully knew. As a matter of fact, I know Tully didn't know the extent of the injuries from an errant chair shot that he delivered to Barry Darso. It was an emotional moment. I caught Tully off guard. That was not my intention. I thought he had seen it. I thought they knew, but Barry had done an interview where he talked about the long lasting effects of that chair shot. And it's a conversation that I don't think fans normally get to see just the human side of professional wrestling. I was really proud of it and what a great series of matches they had and what a cool story on the other side. It is check out television along with learning Lucha and our pal, Sam Adonis. Monday mailbag with Mike Kyoda, Nick Patrick, the book with David Crockett, pod name easy with the Godfather Lex expressed and boy, did Lex upset Bruce Pritchard. It's all available now at adfreeshows.com. You'll find more than a hundred thousand hours worth of bonus content there, including all our panels from the very first star cast. As a matter of fact, every single star cast panel show is available now at adfreeshows.com. It starts at just nine bucks a month. Go check it out adfreeshows.com. Hey man, there's a lot of moving parts. Wait, 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 wait. T- t- you just threw a little nugget out there. How'd Lex interrupt, uh, upset Bruce? Well, I didn't know that Bruce was upset until we went to click record on the heels of it. And boy, he was not happy, uh, with some things that Lex said, where he felt like during the Lex express era, Lex said that he felt like he had a closer relationship with Vince than Bruce did. And I remembered that Lex actually joined the company at a time when Bruce was on the outside. He made his WWF debut, if you will, when he was a part of the WBF and they did a satellite interview at WrestleMania eight. That of course is the WrestleMania that Bruce missed. He left shortly after WrestleMania seven. So I just assumed with Lex being signed to the WBF and working out with Vince all the time and working closely with him on launching that, Hey, that kind of made sense that he would be pretty close with Vince during that time. And I guess they took issue with things that the others had said in different interviews for A and E and home releases and things like that. Either way, I don't know that Lex loved all of Bruce's comments through those interviews. And I know for a fact that Bruce did not like Lex's response that we did for adfreeshows.com. but it's the good, the bad, and the ugly man. And that's what makes adfreeshows.com so fun. We sort of lift the velvet rope and pull the curtain back and we get to see and hear and participate in real conversation that otherwise might not happen. Love it. That's good. Yeah. I didn't know that little fun pack water under the bridge, but it's good to hear and interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But the Craven interview, um, uh, hmm. you know what Conrad to go back to this college football thing. And I want to harp on it. I noticed that you hadn't asked for Cody's mullet, uh, to be putting up. Well, so. hang on. Is Cody going to be with us in Chicago? I, I was waiting confirmation. Cause I didn't know for a I, fact I'm, if he was in attendance, buddy, I'm waiting on confirmation on him too. So, well, I, well I, let, me, let me just say in a loud and clear voice, any Jarrett can get it. I'll whoop oh, Karen. Oh. I'll whoop Cody. I'll whoop oh, Jeff. Oh. If you want to bring the doll, there it is. It's all on the line. My beard versus the queen's hair. Let's see oh. what she says. Let's see what she says. Boy, oh boy, oh. By the way, he made that in real time. I just sprung that on him. He didn't have that in the can. He's good at Photoshop now. And he is. Hey, uh, we are talking a little sports today. And I, I want to mention that as you and I are recording tonight is a pretty big moment in the history of Monday night raw, Joe Tessitore, a guy who has called, I'm talking about real big time sports, whether you're talking about Monday night football, you're talking about top rank boxing. You're talking about BCS games for college football. Joe Tessitore is synonymous with major sports. And tonight is his Monday night raw debut. He's going to be working closely with Michael Cole. Michael Cole is a big advocate for this. Uh, I know that TKO is trying to get more into a more sports centric feel. You know, they've got a lot of partnerships with fanatics. And so they're just tied in with all these other sports now. Joe Tessitore is going to be interesting to say the least. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to wonder what's his product knowledge, how familiar with this is he going to be, but anyone who really understands calling college football knows, Hey man, it's not like the NFL and, and the NFL certainly has a lot of parody, but I'm saying in college football, man, it's a new crop of kids and skills that you got to memorize every single season. 
I'm pumped to see what Joe does tonight. As a fan, what do you think about Joe Tessitore calling Monday Night Raw tonight? When I first heard the news, Conrad, um, man, I, I kind of multiple thoughts. Uh, first one came. Um, first one came to my mind was without risk, there's no reward. Um, I don't want to say this is a big gamble because Raw has been around 30 plus years and everything that goes with that. Um, Joe's not going to be running so low and all the things, and I'm sure he's prepped and all that, but kind of, I did a media day in Sioux Falls, uh, last Friday and, uh, went in, got interviewed, did the radios and TVs and all that. But anyway, I got interviewed by, um, uh, gosh, almighty. Oh, I'm forgetting the guy's name. Apologies. But anyway, sat down with him and, He's like, yeah, my kind of my day gig is the weatherman. I'm like, interesting. Uh, and he goes, yeah, the, anyway, he knew his wrestling. I said, you know, I've been interviewed uh, about every Saturday morning um, for about seven years when I broke in by another weatherman. And a lot of folks didn't really realize that Dave Brown, Lance Russell, Dave Brown, Memphis, Tennessee, Dave um, – well, Lance was the general manager and new TV inside and out and everything that goes with that. But Dave was the weatherman on ABC and he did the big jump to NBC WMC TV and, um, understanding that dynamic of, of the people in Memphis and still to this day, people talk about this is that, you know, the weatherman, especially back in that era, prior to cable TV or, or the big thing is, is he's not just really a local celebrity, but in a lot of ways you trusted your weatherman. Now they get it. They're about half right, but still people tune in and the weather, believe it or not, always gets, you know, the monster ratings because people want to know what's coming up and they trust the weatherman. I say this to say, I think Joe has a lot of positive momentum going with him um, in the fact that, People know him. They know his voice. I'm not saying the wrestling world, but but just as in, in the sporting world, and that crossover is the million-dollar question. Um, we know that MMA and professional wrestling, um, I don't say completely different audiences, but there are different audiences in basketball and football and baseball and NASCAR and just all the different sports. They all have different demos and different dynamics on this, but Joe – has a familiarity and ha been in high pressure situations. Um, but it's all going to come down to what you just said. How well does he really know the product? And Conrad, um, I'm sure if we sat down and I started telling you some ins and outs about the mortgage business, you would be able to catch it. I mean, before I got a few words out, because you know the business inside and out. Joe's stepping up to the plate. I hope he understands uh, the, the the business, because um, that's what it's going to come down to. It, it's to me, it's it's really that simple. Well, and when I think of Joe, I think of sports, and I am so excited that college football is back. But this week is different. NFL Week One is here. And a new season means new ways to get in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple, like picking a player to score a touchdown. It really is that simple. And if you fire up over at uh, DraftKings right now, and Jeff, I've even got you uh, a link there, man, you've got all the games laid out. And I'm wondering if anything jumps off the page to you what jumps off to me is the Cleveland Browns are a two and a half point favorite over the Dallas Cowboys. That doesn't even seem right. Like to me, that feels like free money. I'd be riding with the Cowboys on this one, but that's just me. Hey, score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app and use our code MYWORLD. That's code MYWORLD for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets. When you bet just five bucks and you get one month of NFL plus premium on us only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccp.org. 
Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. NFL Plus Premium available only to new and former NFL Plus subscribers. Additional NFL Plus Premium terms at nfl.com slash terms. Jeff, 250 bucks in bonus bets. My goodness. When you just bet $5, is there anything that jumps off when you're taking a look at DraftKings today? Is there anything that jumps off the page to you? See, and I'm, I don't know, Conrad, I don't think we've ever had this conversation. Are you just, when you get into the lines of, of, um, it's a blast, but boy, it creates a lot of stress. That Dallas game that we, you just right off the top. I, I, it's funny how you want to go all in on Dallas. I'm for the first time in a long time. And it's not because of Nathan Segura, the Browns are stacked across the board, both sides of the uh, line. It, it, I just, I, I agree with the line and this is what I'll always end up saying. There's a reason that they have it at two and a half or three and a half. Or, they know what the hell they're talking about. It is so razor close, but no, I are you going to fucking pick a pick? Damn it. Brown. Give us a damn game. What are you doing? Browns. What? Uh, yes. That's what I'm saying. It, it, I'm going with the Browns. Oh my gosh. I thought you were a Homer and you were going to take the Jags over the dolphins or something like that. <laughs> Will you stop? The Browns ain't going to beat the Cowboys. The balls, regardless the balls. Buddy, I can't – don't throw your hands up at Use me. the code MYWORLD right now. Download the, the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code MYWORLD. And don't listen to Jeff. Stay away yeah. from the Browns. Go all the way to the Browns. No. Go to the, Vols. the Vols this weekend. No, buddy. We're talking about the NFL. We're talking about DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code MYWORLD. Get 250 in bonus bets. You just got to put $5 in play. And don't put your $5 on the Browns. What are you doing? Put it on the Browns. Take it to the bank. Use Go our, tight. Use our promo code, my world. Hey, uh, let's talk about uh, everything else that's happened in wrestling. Because, boy, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Like, since you and I got together, I can't believe this is... Re- I go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, the Joe Tessitore, uh, I had a question. Is he... Did they say, is that just for like McAfee's gone away is Joe just for the season or is he full-time now Joe's the full-time announcer for raw when they make the move to Netflix Joe is the announcer tonight and and for the foreseeable future Joe is the announcer until okay Joe is the announcer now Vince was here he'd be the announcer until Halloween Havoc and then he's shit canned and we never hear from him again but Joe is the (laughs) announcer hey it's going to be interesting, pal. Those are big, big, big shoes. It is. It is a big opportunity. I mean, think about all the voices we've had of Monday night raw and through the history. It's not that many. No, there, there've been some stop-offs and some experiments, but I'm talking about the voice of Monday night raw. A lot of people would say, is it Jr? Is it Michael Cole? And now is it Joe Tessitore? Like That's this, this feels yeah, like no- it could be a passing of the baton. So we'll see. We'll so see. real quick. Raw had Vince, then Jr., then Michael Cole. That's really the three, correct? Yeah, there were others along the way, but not nothing full time, did they? Well, they tried several different experiments, but in the end, I, it felt like for several years they were trying to find a replacement for Jr. and he just couldn't find anybody that he really liked. Remember, he tried to hire Mike Goldberg from the UFC. Yeah. He, and, he, and Adamly, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Mike Adamly, coach was through there. I mean, there were a lot of different folks who had a shot. Uh, there was even an experiment a few years ago where they were, you know, Victor Joseph and a few other folks. But I'm talking about when people think about the voice of Monday Night Raw. You're right. We did start with Vince. A lot of stutter starts. I'm just going so many, again. so many. Is yeah. this the next one or is this a commitment? I think the difference is Vince is gone. Joe's such a big name. They don't want to have a public failure. I think it's bad for everybody involved. I don't think Nick Khan is going to allow that to happen. I think Joe Tessitore is going to be here for the long haul. And think about that. If you really do wind up with Joe Tessitore on raw and Pat McAfee on SmackDown. Interesting, man. That's cool. 
That's a lot of crossover. That's a lot of firepower, especially behind the announce desk. And then you garnish it up with some Corey Graves, some Wade Barrett, some Michael Cole. It does feel like Michael Cole starting to maybe take a step back. And so if it does become Wade Barrett and, and Corey Graves or whoever it else it is, but yeah. when it's all said and done, if it's Joe Tessitore on one show and Pat McAfee on the other, that's a hell of a coup for TKO. At the, it, at the end of the day, they're getting away from wrestling. Yes, they are. And not in a bad way. I, I mean, that sounds negative, but I'm saying like, yeah, they're I, I, no, I, okay. If that came out negative, I'm just saying they are moving away. They're not making wrestling feel like this segregated thing. They're trying to put it all together. Like, I don't know if you watched the game as, as you and I were recording last night, that was the big Vegas game, which was yep. USC and LSU. Did set you, a record Allegiant stadium. Did you watch the game at all? Yeah. I, not play by play, but yes. Did I'm you see any commercials? They always have like a tourism thing for whenever they do like a Vegas game like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had a Vegas commercial and man, they were very careful not to use any allegiances for any specific teams, but you would see a woman wearing a purple Jersey with no Viking logos. And then she'd put on like a Viking hat. And then, you know, so you saw all the like super fan accoutrement, if you will, for these different yep. franchises. But the thing you saw over and over and over was a super fan holding up the big gold belt from the WWF. Like the one that Cody has, you saw that logo very prominently all over that Vegas commercial. And it was like, you know what? They didn't want to pay a licensing fee for the NBA or for baseball or for basketball or the NFL, whatever they, they didn't want to do that. But WWE was like, oh yeah, you can use our belt. No problem. And there were no superstars represented. The guy wasn't wearing anybody's merch necessarily. Yeah. But that belt was really prominent. And I was like, dude, they're swinging for the fences. They're trying to make wrestling, not this niche thing. They want it to become more and more mainstream. And if you take a look at the, the way the UFC was positioned once upon a time, they were banned on pay-per-view. They'd lose their building and they'd have to run in fucking mobile Alabama on three days notice sort of thing. And now you see what it has become where it is really mainstream and global. I think that's what they're trying to do here. And anytime you can have someone like Tessa Torrey or someone like Pat McAfee, they lend that credibility to your brand. I think it's a home run for WWE. I'm pumped for Joe and WWE. I, well, I, I'm pumped for the industry because just as we're saying all this, what a freaking opportunity for AEW. Yeah. I mean, to, to me, it, 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 it is uh plant your flag in the ground where the best wrestle, you know, um, some things, uh, you think change that, that, but anyway, a way to differentiate the brands. I think it's an opportunity for the industry as a whole. That is, it's very cool. Interesting. Interesting. I got to check that Vegas spot out. That's really interesting. Also interesting is the news that came out since you and I sat down something you and I, and well, everyone else in wrestling thought was tabled and shelved a long time ago. A Vince McMahon documentary is coming out on Netflix later this month. I can't believe this is real. We're like three weeks away from a six part series on Netflix. I think they're an hour long and it's six episodes. This is, uh, the executive producers who put together tiger King, which took over at the start of the pandemic. And of course, Bill Simmons, who we've all seen some of his great work for 30 for 30 that he's done for ESPN. And it's subtitled Mr. McMahon mastermind madman. Allegedly they did over 200 hours worth of interviews for this. I mean, they not only interviewed Vince, but they invented, interviewed his family, his close friends, people he's worked with. And I don't know how much of a show this is going to be about just WWE. It's probably primarily focused on Vince McMahon, but you can't tell the Vince story without talking about some WWE. Some. <laughs> and there's a lot of people. Well, I do think they'll probably get into like his fam his family history, like his just real life growing up and his family relationships and things like that. I assume all of that will be covered, but a lot of people are wondering and speculating, what is this going to look like? Because WWE is now partnering with Netflix and they're not going to let so-and-so say such and such about their company. But this is not something they have editorial control over. And as I understand it, even Vince McMahon did not have editorial control. I don't know if this is going to be a, an absolute burial of WWE, but from what I understand, 
it is not very positive about Vince McMahon. I don't know what to expect here, but I can't wait to see it. What say you? Conrad, I'll tell you a little story. What day did this broke? I see irrelevant, but I, I was doing cardio. I feel like, yes. But anyway, when I looked at my phone, I literally scrolled and pulled up your number. And for whatever reason, I either thought he's doing a pod, maybe um, just the timing went right. And I said, man, oh, man, this is longer than a two or three minute conversation. Because, Connie, I got a lot of questions for you that maybe you can or can't answer. I'm just saying as far as recall, not, nothing off color off mark here. First question was when the original idea came up for this and they started filming, Vince was still the chairman, correct? Uh, yeah. Vince was, Vince was the big boss when this all and started. When, yeah. When it all started. Um, and so going into it with them, and another thing that I found interesting is that, and maybe it's very telling. I was like a lot of us shut in during pandemic or all that. And I, I watched old tiger King and obviously a, a train wreck and everything. I find it interesting that that is literally on all the copy from the executive producer of tiger King. So is that like a comparative? Is it like, Hey, we did Halloween and Friday the 13th. So come watch this horror flick. Is it branding it out of the gate? I don't know. Uh, here's what I think it is. I think, can we agree that tiger King was the number one streaming service show or concept or program? Yeah. So I'm just saying, I think they're making sure that you understand. Cause I mean, let's be honest in 2019, if you pulled me or you aside and said, Hey man, they're doing this documentary series on this crazy guy who's got like big cats and there's this other crazy lady and she doesn't want him to have the big cats and he doesn't want her to have the big cats. And anyway, it's a documentary about these crazy people who like big tigers and lions and things like that. Are you interested? I think you and I would have said, no, I'd rather go cut the grass than watch that. Well, there's murder involved. But, but the huh? point is, I think we all were forced into, well, everybody's talking about it. I'll try it. And we started it and we were like, holy cow, I'm all in. This is fascinating. I don't know why I can't stop watching this. I think they're putting that tiger King copy on there to make sure that non wrestling fans who would normally say, I don't give a rip about Vince, but man, he was a terrible person. And man, that WWE stuff, that's fake fighting. That's for kids. I'm not watching it. I said, when my kids left the house, I'd never have that garbage on my TV again. I think they're saying tiger King to say, Hey, as a reminder, you didn't think you'd be interested in watching a tiger documentary either, but we got you like it. it I think they're trying to swing and make this a more mainstream opportunity. Yep. And Bill Simmons, uh, sports junkie. Yeah. I mean, he's so branded in the sports world, which is another kind of fascinating, but he knows his wrestling as well. But I'm going back to the, the original thing. So they started it when he was the chairman and started all these interviews. Um, man, I, I think at the end of the day, like any doc or anything like this, how many edits have they been through? What is left on the director's table? What made it and didn't made it make it? Um, obviously, Netflix is in the business of creating as many streams as possible. End of the day, that's that's exactly what they signed up to be. So, oh boy, well, let me well, let me give you a spoiler too. They didn't just yeah. interview WWE people; they interviewed outsiders. Like you the, got any names? I'm not going to say any names because I don't know who wound up on the cutting room floor. But okay. third party people who cover the business, I'll just say that. Okay. So, so people who, who don't work for WWE, but cover the industry and might appear in talking heads and other non WWE projects, but almost never a WWE project, those people were interviewed here. So it's not like, well, this is not a whitewash story of Vince McMahon, or I don't know what the final version is, but I know that some friends of ours, some people you and I know, they had a chance to screen an episode or two of this at this point, well over a year ago, maybe two years ago now. And it was not positive. It was not okay. well received. It was very negative. 
Okay. So, you know, like the, the, the thing that, and, and through the years, and I'm not just saying the doc, I'm talking about like going through the years, Conrad, just, I'll call it, uh, cause the, the, the business of professional wrestling, you got to deal with networks, you got to deal with venues, you got to deal with licensees. Um, you, you, you've got to deal with certain management of, of, of other celebrities. So you got to deal in the agency world. You know, there's different, you, you just can't operate in a silo internally and Vince, the face of professional wrestling, um, literally since mid eighties, uh, in, in so many ways, you know, I've heard the stories, um, and I don't want to say good or bad, just the real life on how he did business, uh, the shrewdness, the leverage. Uh, some folks would say, man, that was a brilliant move. Other folks would say, man, he boxed those guys in a corner or just all that kind of stuff. I'm curious to see if they, you know, whether it's somebody from the garden or maybe through the year, somebody at NBC, because when you get right down to the negotiations of the big, big deals and look, Nick Khan's in that uh, seat right now. Business is not always fun and it's not always easy. There is a underbelly to it all. So do they, how do they represent the building of the WWE from literally, you know, a territory business to, to, to a global business? I'm curious to see all that, even how much they touch on it. I don't know. Yeah. I think, uh, Conrad, how do you think it's going to be, um, you think it's going to be successful on a streaming, uh, you know, it'll that, be a that, home run. It'll be the talk of, uh, Netflix for a bit. It'll be in their top okay. 10 most watched people are going to, this will be on sports talk radio. It'll become a pop culture thing. Again, it's going to be a real shot in the arm for WWE and everybody's going to be talking about Vince McMahon. When I say shot in the arm, I mean, people are going to be talking about it in Water a way that, that maybe they Folks who don't normally talk about professional wrestling and WWE are going to be talking about it. And at this point, from all intents and purposes, Vince is on the outside looking in. He is as crazy as a sentence as this sounds to even say Vince McMahon is not involved with the WWE at all. So they can now distance themselves. So any bad behavior that's covered, anything that's controversial that's said about him being a ruthless cutthroat businessman who left people out in the cold or screwed people over. I mean, whatever Brett used to say about, oh, he used to treat us like we were circus animals and he'd take us out back and put one in our head or whatever the deal is. They can say whatever they want now. And WWE can say, well, that was then this is now he gone and everything's okay. So, and here's the other thing. It's not like the, the deal with Netflix is in jeopardy. It's already signed, sealed, delivered, like it's coming. And I, I just think that this will be the first time we've been able to see a Vince McMahon story that hasn't been whitewashed. And it'll be interesting to see what's in, but what I'm more fascinated by, but without even seeing the six hours they choose to air is the near 200 hours that did not air. Like, can you imagine all that stuff? Like they could continue to roll out B roll and follow ups and little bonuses as that stuff drips out the things that wound up on the cutting room floor. Cause you want to talk about an unenviable task, Jeff, how do you take 200 hours and whittle it down to six? I mean, like that, that, so, which leads me to a, another thought that I've had when I was uh, on the elliptical and I was going to call you in that, okay, they've had it. Cause I thought it went back years. Uh, if they've had this in the can, I, I don't believe in coincidences, only convergences. That's why I'm very interesting to think that this drops at the end of September. So you have a run of October, November and oh. Hello, folks. Professional wrestling comes to Netflix in January. By design, they've held it, I believe. Well, I don't and think they, there's any doubt of that. I mean, I think, you know, they probably know there's a lull right here. And this is when football starts to really heat up. Like, there's a lot of reasons for them to release it right now. Um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, if I, I, I saw Brian Alvarez say he didn't think it would be soft, like whitewashed and there's nothing there, but he also didn't think it would be, you know, a complete burial and just a disaster. He thought it would be somewhere in the middle as far as how truthful and honest it was. But you know, 
it's weird because whether we're talking wrestling or we're talking politics or sports, the truth is, and always has been somewhere in the middle. I have my opinion. You have your opinion. Oh, sure. The way you yeah. interpreted something to be true could be different than I, and it's probably really somewhere in the middle, but it's going to be interesting to see what this looks like over the next few weeks. Well, at the end of the day too, Conrad, because some, you know, the people, the emotional and, uh, you can believe a little bit of another story and a little bit of this, everybody, I'll say this with complete respect out of any and everything taken in. Most people believe just like in politics, they believe what they want to believe. It's just that simple. But if you take it back to almost to square one, there's no question that Vince McMahon's life story is incredibly fascinating and, and, and just I'm as, as a kid in Carolina growing up to, to run in a, a global business, there is so much more than six hours and it's going to be interesting to see the product they put out that, you know, it, it's uh wow. I don't know. I'll be, well, I'll be tuning in. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, something I know you're tuned into, and I can't wait to get your take on is Lumen. Lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach. It's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath. And on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs, and then it gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, your workouts, your sleep, and even your stress management. Here's how Lumen works. All you have to do is breathe into your Lumen first thing in the morning and you'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. And then Lumen will give you personalized nutrition plans for that day based on your measurements that same morning. You can also breathe into it before and after workouts and meals, so you know exactly what's going on with your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. You see, it works with an app that you download on your phone. If you're watching along with us here on My World, you know what we're talking about. It's going to show you when you breathe into it on your app, it'll show you, Hey, one through five, where are you? And it gives you a plan for the day. Your metabolism is really your body's engine. And that's why your metabolic health matters. You see your metabolism is how your body turns the food you eat into the fuel that keeps you going, not just physically, but mentally too, because your metabolism is at the center of literally everything your body does. Optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits like easier weight management, improved energy levels, better fitness results, better sleep, etc. Lumen gives you recommendations to improve your metabolic health with each breath. Lumen's recommendations are designed to improve your pre and post workout, fueling both better performance and recovery. So you can power through your toughest workouts and add on muscle mass. My wife could not believe this was real. And she explained it to me, Jeff. It's like, we've all seen the image of a guy running on a treadmill. And then he's got that mask over his face in the doctor's office. They're doing all of that to measure exactly what this machine does, but you don't have to go to the doctor's office. Lumen puts it in your hand and makes it easy. And if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me slash my world to get 15% off your Lumen. That's L U M E N D O T me. That's lumen dot me. That's L U M E N dot me slash my world for 15% off your purchase. And we thank lumen for sponsoring the episode one more time. That's lumen L U M E N dot M E slash my world. Jeff, I know you're going to love this man having the ability to short circuit. I mean, once upon a time you had to listen to your body and get familiar with it and get in tune and all that still matters going with your gut and all that. But I recently heard a friend of mine who does fasting and they thought, well, you do 18 hour fast and that's what you're supposed to do. But with Lumen, they found out, you know what, after 10 and a half hours, fasting no longer helps my body. It starts hurting it, but he wouldn't have known that because he had just always heard, well, it's 18 hours. Lumen is unique to you. This is data that it almost doesn't even seem real, right, Jeff? It's like, 
I don't even know how to come up with a, a, a not just entertaining analogy, a, a truthful analogy, because, you know, old Steve Jobs revolutionized, truly revolutionized the world in everything. How we listen to music, phone, email, it's all in our pocket. Now the technology off of an app and the health and Conrad, you know, especially the last three, four, five years, when my feet hit the ground, I kind of, every morning I'm kicking into uh, my caloric intake, uh, you know, back up, even my sleep, but just everything as the day goes on and I drive Karen crazy and my calories and I got to balance it out all that, but this going to the next level, folks, my world listeners, if you're into health and either want to make a gain or a loss or feel better or try to figure something out, I'm telling you, the technology will blow your freaking mind. It, it just will. Conrad, it's, I, well, I'll have a conversation offline with Megan. It, it, it is a, it's a life well, hack. It's a cheat code. It's a, yeah, I was going to say I, game changer doesn't do it right. Cause we always kind of throw that around. That's good. It's, it's a cheat, cheat code. Like when I was a kid, there was the, there was the Contra code where if you typed on your Nintendo controller, if you hit a certain magical number of combination of buttons up, up, down, down, left, right. I mean, if you did that right, it unlocked something that you didn't even think was possible. That's what Lumen does with your body. I can't tell you how excited my wife was. She could not believe this is real technology and it's available on your freaking phone. Go look you for go. yourself right now. L U M E N dot M E slash my world. If you've seen it before and after of my wife and her fitness journey, you know how serious she's taking this. And when she saw this, she said, I can't believe this is real. You got to tell all your listeners about it. Go try it. L U M E N dot M E forward slash my world. Hey, so Jeff, we got to talk about, uh, something that came out last week that caught me off guard. I have been fortunate enough and lucky enough to uh, have be, be privy to see things in wrestling that I probably would not have normally seen, but I understood that there was, there was trust implied by me being able to see what I was seeing. And it just flew all over me. Like, how is this out here? A photo was leaked before the August 12th, Monday night raw. If you're watching with us on YouTube, we're going to show you that photo right now at myworldpod.com. And to Jeff and I, this is something that well, it happens before every big show. This is not uncommon. It's not unusual. It's the norm. But the idea that this photo exists and is posted publicly was like, oh, what? I mean, if you take a look, you see at the bottom of your screen there, there's that nothing happening clipboard Joey fan in a suit. And to his left is Triple H. To the right on the other side of the post, there's Bruce Pritchard. In the ring, there's Gunther. I mean, these guys are working through. I mean, I know that some guys, some old school guys, some old timers get uncomfortable talking about how to get color and the whole process of that. And I understand that, but this to me was like, oh, this isn't supposed to be posted. I couldn't believe it. What did you think when you saw this photo make the rounds last week? I said, Hey, there's Stu. No, I, some of the production folks, boy, Conrad, I'll be back up. When you, uh, said, we we're going to sit down here. You said, Jeff, you will not believe all the stuff that we're going to cover today. And I said, buddy, I've, we got two or three podcasts, uh, that we've got on the horizon. I've read my research on all of them and Connie, you ain't kidding. All right. This pick, this is where maybe sometimes I'm, uh, as Karen would like to say that sometimes I'm just not completely dialed in and in tune. It surprised me that this had, pick had this, I guess, kind of bigger reaction because, um, is this the first time this kind of stuff's come out? That's my first question. Yes. You got. It, and that, I guess that in and of itself, um, surprises me. I, I remember, uh, specifically before Ric Flair's last match, SummerSlam was in town, uh, here in, at the Titan stadium and going and we were out at ringside and a bunch of things like that. I mean, there was an all out kind of assault. Some, some guys, we, they thought security was, had kind of sneaked in up on the upper level, uh, opposite hard camera and they were going to get photos and man, there was a, just a full assault to don't let them take pictures of this and that. I really thought that pictures had leaked before like this. Um, and, and I guess it's 
you know, proof here, here's what it is, but it wasn't that big a deal to me in that I just assumed that everybody else assumed, you know, through the years. I mean, when I broke in Conrad folks would say, Hey man, did y'all do that in rehearsals today? Or do you got to go to practice this week? Do y'all go to like practice on Sundays to practice or how many days a week do you practice and this and that? Now I've, I've seen some old timers. Uh, I've seen some old timers slap some folks for saying we don't practice, you know, just the, the, the kayfabe era. Um, but to me, it wasn't, wasn't that big a deal. Uh, I'm surprised more hadn't come out about it. Um, it's a, major production, but it's again, again, I circle back to the wrestling fan is so passionate. They eat up anything and everything. And if this is news, great. <laughs> it didn't really expose anything. Um, except there's old, uh, Joe park with his silly looking shoes on. Other than that, you know, the whole world knows he can't dress, but this confirmed it. It was interesting to me because it, it was always sort of laid out to me like, uh, Hey, you can't take pictures in here. Right? Yeah. We know that. Duh. I mean, I, I always felt like, yeah, I, I understand that. And I wondered, cause I think once upon a time, there was a photo done at ringside where you could see guys just at the desk, some extras taking photos, but in the background, you saw like Bray Wyatt talking to Roman reigns or something like that. And they had to take it down and that extra wasn't invited back and blah, blah, blah. It was a whole big thing for a day. And then it went away. But the idea that you get to see this sort of photo to you, I realize this doesn't feel like anything. This is just old hat, but for people to see this, Hey, those guys are just in their street clothes and they're all working out together. And I realize it's not 1987. We're not talking about Jim Duggan getting caught smoking dope with the iron cheek in the car. It's a different <laughs> thing, but I still think there is a little bit of that. Oh, we're not supposed to see this. That gets everybody excited. Now seeing the reaction and how well it was received. Do you think we should see more of this? Should companies lean into this and share more of it? I mean, we've seen like behind the scenes stuff before, but we're always careful not to show the guys like working through their magic. And I but understand that there is this suspension of disbelief, even in 2024 on some level, because for instance, we saw over the weekend, they, they had a big pay-per-view over in Berlin and on the way there, they were all doing media. And I think Kevin Owens was quoted as saying something like, I don't talk to CM Punk. We're not friends. So we don't talk. We don't have a reason to talk. If we were working together, we would, but why would we talk if we're not friends? And everyone immediately gravitates to, oh, I can't wait to see them have a match. Cause if they're not friends, then boy, what could that mean? Well, they got heat brother. And I think even now, so many quote unquote, smart fans who know what pro wrestling is would still like to believe, okay, I know the rest of it's a show, but now that like he was hitting him for real right there. Like we all want to believe that yes. but when you post stuff like this, does that ruin some of that and kill some of the magic? But I don't believe so. And, and at the end of the day, whether in professional sports, um, there's that, well, you may not call it famous. I, I, there's a clip that, um, Kobe Bryant, I just, uh, I don't know if you know this story, Conrad, but Kobe Bryant had a teammate named Paul Gasol, but they went to the Olympics. And yep. so Paul, I'm putting Paul, it yeah. through his chest. I'm gonna, and he, he dropped an F bomb and I'm running right through it. They're teammates. But when Kobe stepped on the floor and competed, not only Paul Gasol, his teammate, but all of his teammates went, okay, this is for real. <laughs> this ain't no playtime. So, okay. That, that's it. I think that's in human nature. We all want to dial in and want to believe it. So a photo like this, when I think there's docs out there and, and you know, uh, talent a come through the curtain and talent B, uh, come through the curtain and then they shake hands and thanks and all that. I think there's been tidbits of that in documentaries and just all that kind of stuff. Go to go back to Ric Flair last match, Conrad, how many people knowing my dad's history and Rick's history and Lawler's history and whoever else you wanted to combine and all that. Um, you just chuckled about it. Uh, okay. Uh, oh man, Jeff and Rick and, and lethal and, 
and Andrade, they're having the match, but Je uh, Karen and Megan, now that was real. Yes. From a, 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 a long-time veteran. <laughs> I mean, it just kind of the whole nature of it. So, I no, I don't think it hurts the business. Um, I think if people are talking about it, it's it's the old thing. As long as folks are talking about it, uh, it's a positive. And, you know, the, the differences and, you know, whether it's Dynamite or Rampage or Collision or Raw or SmackDown or Impact or whatever it is, and I don't want to say this picture is controversial, but but something that is it, that it kind of touches a, a button of, oh, wow, did you see that? And that picture's probably got 20 people in it, 25 people. Everybody's eyes will gravitate towards something different. Um, you know, they, they just will or, or lock on or they have a takeaway of, oh, wow, look, 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 look what they're doing there. I don't know. I think it's good. Uh, I, I mean, maybe not. Good. That's what that's where it gets into. Do we need to see it all the time? Probably not. Uh, but every once in a while, it just kind of uh, good water cooler talk. Um, I don't know. Um, Conrad, do you think we should see more of it? That, I, I mean, that's a. I do not. Okay. I do not. I want to believe that every now and again, hey, that guy. I mean, do you remember when CM Punk debuted? Like it was Survivor Series in Chicago. It was the big return from Randy Orton feels like the show's over. And then here comes CM Punk. And it felt like a happening because it wasn't planned. It wasn't expected. If that photo came out beforehand and punk's just walking around, you lose all the magic. Yeah, I agree more than that. If when, when punk is walking down the aisle, Seth Rollins is losing his mind, not on camera. And referees and Corey Graves and CM Punk and those type folks are trying to hold Seth Rollins back to keep him from running down the ramp and getting after, I mean, they're holding back Seth Rollins to keep him away from CM Punk and the internet focused and fixated, not just on, oh my gosh, Punk is back. And there were even people who caught, like they put the little bug on like, Hey, that's the copyright notice we're doing. That's the sign off. Here's the little credit to close the show but then the music hits. So they did all those little things to make us believe. And then when Seth Rollins is freaking out and flipping out, I mean, I'm not trying to ruin the magic guys, but come on. Now, if, <laughs> if, if we see them the next week, chatting it up, having a coffee on the apron, there's nothing to go for, but like when Seth Rollins gets in the ring with CM Punk and they're going to have a match. There are going to be a lot of people who say, now you remember at that debut, he was pissed. So That's this, right. but I feel like if we just continue to say, oh, not really. We're getting Starbucks. We're, we're making towns together. We, we went on a Ferris wheel together. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, I understand that the genie's out of the bottle, but I do think the things that we gravitate to are the things that still make us want to believe. Oh, for sure. And this sort of takes me out of that a little bit. Now. With the benefit of hindsight, I love these photos and I hope that I wish they would release more. Like if they were posting photos like that before WrestleMania 17 today, and we got to see it all these years after the fact, that'd be awesome. Like the little kid in me would just jump at the chance to see photos like this today in 2024 about WrestleMania five with Hogan and Savage. Like how cool would it be if you got to see like a practice match that we all heard happened with Hulk Hogan and the ultimate warrior in a ring in South Florida before WrestleMania six, that would be cool now, but while they're still in the fucking feud, that's weak. I'm with you. And yeah. that's, that's the beauty of the business. That's why the, the, um, the different conversations, I feel like that sometimes they run together, but when I have with different folks it is that, um, I know there's kind of a, a different conversations going on. Oh, wrestling's now. Uh, I heard this the other day, Conrad, just because the, the, the world of entertainment is so much bigger. And although revenues may be up in those numbers, wrestling's more niche than ever. Let me stop there. Do you buy into that Conrad? No wrestling's more niche than ever. Yeah. I think they're trying to expand on it with things like that Vegas commercial and Joe Tessitore and Pat McAfee. I think they're trying to make it, Less niche, but yes, it is a niche right now. It is a niche. Like I, I have this argument all the time with people. Cause they say 
wrestling's not more popular than ever. And I'm like, or I, I say today is WWE's business is bigger today than ever before. And people want to argue that. And they say, well, it's not as popular. Okay. Based on what? Based on pop culture. Cause you don't walk into Walmart and see that they have the t-shirts there. I get that, but I'm saying back then you couldn't just look at your phone, click a button and it's in your mailbox in two days. That's all changed. So I do think as far as the influence on mainstream, maybe there is less casual fans watching. Maybe there are fewer eyeballs watching domestically, but it's bigger globally. And the people who are in it, like those casual fans that were all watching those 10 million people who were watching wrestling every Monday night, were they buying action figures by the, for the, for the most part? No. Were they buying merch for the most part? No. And that era, if you didn't go to Walmart, you had to wait until they came to your town in order to attend a show and buy it. Or you had to mail a check and check your mail in six weeks and hope it showed up. Like all of that has changed. So I think, the fans who were, who are wrestling fans now are more engaged than ever are more passionate than ever are spending more money than ever. I look at the amount of money. My friends who are my, my wrestling friends, like pond water, Dave, you know, pond water, you take oh. a look at the amount of money he was spending on wrestling in say 1998 and he might buy the pay-per-views, but now you take a look at what he's doing. He's got a whole gimmick room with every sort of damn tchotchke and Funko there is for a Von Eric or a flare or whatever. I mean, that's, he's just buying shit and stacking it from the baseboards to the ceiling. And he was not doing that in 98. So I think that there's more money to be made because we're super serving the base. And I think the base is way more engaged, but I do think there are less casuals. And I think that's why they're trying to get the Joe Tessitore's and the Pat McAfee's and the Netflix steals and all that stuff going. And I think we're playing wordsmith and word salad because niche and, and I, because like, what is, what, what do we mean or what is that? What, what really is that? So another question I had for you, do you think, and I'm just going to pick one of the four, but in NFL, there's all a thousand, but let's just use NHL. Is NHL a niche sport? Yes. Okay. Baseball, a niche audience. Um, not as much soccer in America is a niche. Yep. Uh, even smaller. I, I think that's where I'm trying to cut this piece of the pie. Yeah. That I, I'm going to the, the flip side. I think, and, and just kind of just rambling off the, t the top of my, uh, and look, there's a thousand different ways we, we could make examples of this. But if you look at Peacock, uh, if you look at uh, general entertainment, we're on TBS on two hours, Wednesday, but uh, one hour Friday, two hours on Saturdays, five hours of network TV. Uh, to me, that's not really niche. I'm going to use, you know, Logan Paul comes from a streaming world. I mean, there's just, I mean, and he's full time in it. You know, AEW programs had anybody from Shaq to, I mean, we could go on and on with the celebrity involvement. A man, Jelly Roll was involved. He's Nashville boy, Toby back in the day, just all the different things that have continued to roll along, but I, I'll say now that I believe front and center that yes, the territory days, it was Saturday mornings and a live event business. But since it went national, I'll say, um, eight mid eighties. And now here we are 30, 40 years later. I just, yes. You, on, on the one hand, what is the definition uh, of niche? But I believe there's more folks in America. Again, wordsmith and word salad. What is a casual fan? What is a hardcore fan? We're supersizing all this. Uh, just all the, but I just think wrestling is now. People say, oh, no. They're more mainstream. I think we're more mainstream now than, than ever. I really sincerely believe that because if professional wrestling isn't mainstream, Conrad, tell me what is, because when you look at the genres of music, well, I think everybody looks like the NFL and the NBA and they say, okay, the NFL and the NBA, that's as big as it gets. Like the, I think okay. the NBA well, is a, a stratosphere yeah. different here in America for the NFL, but globally the NBA has a bigger appeal. But if we throw it in our Google machine, it says, Niche is defined as a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. I think wrestling is that. 
I don't think wrestling's for everyone, but I even want to ask you about, would you rather have a really strong niche or would you rather have those casuals? And I want to ask you about that. Matter of fact, let me ask you now, and I want you to think about your answer. We all agree more people were watching wrestling than ever before in 1998. And I know they were doing great arena business and I know they were selling a lot of pay-per-view, but boy, they're making a lot more money now. As far as the longevity of your business, would you rather have the stronger bottom line with a smaller audience, which means if some of that smaller audience erodes, your business can start to circle the drain, or would you rather have the much larger audience that maybe is not as financially invested? Meaning there were a whole lot of people who were watching Monday night raw, who never buy a shirt, who never buy an action figure, who never buy a pay-per-view, but they watch, but are they going to be able to translate that into other dollars? Your dad grew up in a time and you grew up in a business where, Hey, we're doing TV for free. And when I say free, I mean, even the boys ain't getting paid because we're hoping that this becomes an advertisement to get you to spend money. But back then. Certainly the arenas were, were doing well, but they can't sell more than the building can hold. If that makes sense. So when it's sold out, it's sold out. There is a real ceiling to how you can grow your business there with the casuals who are just going to see a show every now and again. So by and large, the majority of them did not. Would you rather have the bigger audience, which almost feels like a tech company? Think about, we've all heard for years. Oh, well we're pre-revenue, but we've got 6 million subscribers. To old country boys like me and Jeff, who are used to running a small business, it's like, Hey, pre-revenue means you ain't making no money, right? It means you can't pay your bills, right? It means you're living on other people's money to keep building this subscriber base. And we just hope one day we make money on it. Right? I think I would go with, I super serve the niche and let's make money on those who were here. Yes. It's a smaller audience, but we can capitalize on that better. I, I ran a similar experiment when I was advertising my mortgage company on the radio, I could get on like a top 40 station that had a huge hundred thousand watt signal and I'd have to pay for every set of ears that heard it. But there's a lot of 12 year old girls listening to the radio who didn't need mortgages. Therefore I'm wasting my money talking to them. If I went with a much smaller sports talk radio on an AM signal on a little tiny stick that not a lot of people can hear, but those people who could hear, they didn't change the channel when a commercial came on because they were the only sports talk station in town. So I'm going to ride it out. It was a more, it was a smaller, but a more passionate fan base. I got a return on the sports station. I never reordered on the top 40 station on the big stick. I want you to think about in wrestling. If you were to spin up and launch your own new company next year, would you want to start with a bigger audience or super serve that audience? And as you think about it, I want to remind you that, Hey, there's still warm weather out there calling you. So fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet, yeah, but meet those wellness goals in time for summer, the end of summer right here to help this menu of chef crafted meals with options like calorie, smart protein plus and keto factor is the real deal, man. And it's because they've got fresh, never frozen meals that are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? They've got 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. So you always have new flavors to explore. So crush your wellness goals with these dietitian approved meals and the ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with these easy and nutritious options. And when I say nutritious, we're also talking restaurant quality. We're talking premium ingredients. Have some filet mignon sound. What about some shrimp? Now how about some black and salmon factors got it all for you. And they keep your kitchen time to a minimum. You see with factor, you're ready in two minutes. Let's recap. That means no shopping, no prepping, no cooking, hell, no cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help manage your calories, maximize your protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well balanced. What are you waiting for? Head right now to factormeals.com slash my world 50. Use our code MYWORLD50 and you'll get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code MYWORLD50 at factormeals.com slash MYWORLD50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Factor's the real deal. I love it. My wife loves it. 
I even understand that some of the boys are loving factor as well. He's muted. I'm muted. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't want you to hear me slug down another swig of coffee. Factor, the queen just texted me, said, hey, uh, when you end, let me know, and I'm going to heat you up a factor meal. Boom. Conrad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this house now with moving parts and everything going on, and I can get me a st- – like, the steaks are the best, but I get steak, chicken. Uh, that's my go-to. I get also these protein um, – Energy balls and the oatmeal. Conrad, uh, this is a factor house. I'll just say this. <laughs> it is factor through and through, but I'm going to have me a factor meal today. Check it out. You're going to love it. It's factormeals.com slash myworld50. Use our promo code myworld50. Get 50% off your first box. So, Jeff, well, I mean, when you really think about, hey, what's more important? I mean, I, I know that some people are going to say, well, what are you talking about? Well, the internet makes such a big deal about how many people are watching dynamite. I mean, every week it's like, Oh, it's six seventy one this week. Can you believe it? Those are people who are watching a free show guys. Like, I don't know that we talk about this enough, but here's a spoiler. If 2 million people watch that show this Wednesday, Tony Khan didn't make any more money. Now I know you're saying to yourself, oh, but can help him on his next deal. Okay. That's fair. Eventually maybe, but the, the rumor and innuendo is, and we don't know that he already has another offer. The offer has been made, but I'm saying while internet wrestling fans are living and dying based on how many people watch a show as a reminder, they paid zero. None of that affected the AEW bottom line. So, but we all fixate on it. We fascinate on it and we all talk about it. And I'm not arguing that I'm just saying that's the reality of it. It's not like, oh, well, a hundred thousand extra watch this week. We get a bonus. It doesn't work that way, but how many people are buying AEW shirts? How many people are buying AEW action figures? How many people are buying the AEW video game? How many people are buying tickets to an AEW show? How many people are buying AEW pay-per-views? Those are all revenue metrics. How many people are watching the free TV show? You already have a deal, whether a thousand people watch it or a million people watch it, you're getting the same. And I know some smart ass is going to say, oh, but they could cancel. Yes, they could. They could also stop buying the fucking pay-per-views. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just curious from your perspective, because it is important in order to sell a bunch of pay-per-views, we got to have a bunch of people watch the show in order to sell a bunch of merch. We got to have a bunch of people watch the show. I get that, but we had more people watching the show in 1998 and we're making more money now. So chat me up from your perspective, Jeff. It's sort of chicken in the egg. Where do you land on this? Well, Connie, uh, and I remembered uh, his name's Tyler Roney. Uh, he's the weatherman, but also, uh, he came to the show on Saturday night. But, um, when I did it was doing my media day, I also did it, uh, at, uh, the on air host was, uh, not Denzel Denzel. Uh, but he is the GM of the rock station Conrad number one in the market. Matter of fact, they still do radio books. Uh, but anyway, uh, then we, as you can imagine, Conrad, I get into conversations about sales and how's it doing. He said, well, you know, and just what you said, it's, it's, it's not as easy to sell on a rock station as if you go to top 40 and there's women's products. And so you get into just the radio station, uh, group, do they want to own, uh, and be number one in the market? Sure. But what they really want to do is, is have a station that can sell a lot of ads, um, and you know, going all the way back to Memphis TV, you know, my old man used to say, and the books would come out sweeps weeks would be May and November. And look, ratings are a barometer, not the barometer for those guys. Territory days. It was all about how many live tickets we could sell, go through the nineties. You just said, Oh, more people were watching. Okay. But did they monetize it? No. Look at the raw deal in the nineties and WCW. I, I don't know what the cooking the books were, if you will, but what did they value? Eric could probably tell us a lot better Then the rights deals come into play. And, and now, you know, the rights deals, you know, are everything, but they're not just counting the linear numbers. And I'm saying TBS, TNT, USA, everything that goes w- with all that. Um, now it's okay. 671. I think is what you just said or whatever it is. Well, wait a minute. Isn't that a top five number? So relatively speaking, not the 
a barometer, but a barometer, that's pretty damn good. If out of all the shows on TV, it's top three, top five, top 10, all that. But did we account for YouTube numbers? And did we account for shit? Conrad, I've told you so many times, Cody watches dynamite rampage collision, raw SmackDown impact all on highlights. He consumes it all through and he can, I mean, he came in last night uh, talking Ethan Page from the AEW. He's, he's, a, he's an Ethan Page fan. But just that's how – so it's just a completely different set of – no, there's many more barometers. So to answer your question, Conrad, and I know you know the answer to this is, is that, as you said, the old country boys, I have that habit of liking to eat, and they do not take promises at Publix anymore. Or I don't think they're right. You got to pay with cash. And so you wait, wait, have- wait, wait, you can't buy groceries with Google trends. <laughs> you can't pay utility bills with retweets. Is that what you're saying right now? Well, I think you're, I think you're, I don't know. Up- I don't yeah. know. Might be suspect at best, it's, but it's crazy. But again, it goes back to, they show a photo online and everybody, it, it appears when haywire, you can't put that out there. I mean, um, it's in our topical list to, to, to discuss. And I've loved these kind of podcasts, Conrad. I freaking absolutely love them because we kind of bounce all over the place. But your question is one that I believe in boardrooms across America, and I'm getting outside of wrestling. It's because there's big money deals being done on hopes and promises of, or would you call it pre-profit? That's uh, we're, we're, we're pre-revenue pre what we're, we're, uh, <laughs> and I, we're in a growth strategy. We've got a 6 million user base and our run rate is only at a million dollars a week. So we feel like by 2040, we'll have an algorithm that allows us to sell ads and get a return. And I do think that some of that can play into it, but, but at the end of the day, super serving. And that was where I was going to go that, that when I think about my action figure, uh, is recently out, out and boy, kind of getting some offers come in, uh, that, that figures signing. But when, when I think about the ways to monetize, uh, and I think there was a little Twitter thing about Conrad, you put something out about, I think Cody's robe or something being sold. And I don't know if you said something to the fact, Picture money. <laughs> well, the the streams of picture money are very, very diverse nowadays. And again, it's another barometer and how to monetize the audience. So, yes, at the end of the day, wrestling was niche, if you want to call it that, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to, to 2024. There's just many more ways to monetize this niche down to a freaking stream of a highlight of something that happened 20 years ago, because there was a clip recently uh, of me and Bret Hart's raw match and the whole, I think it was a 15 minute raw match, but the whole match was kind of concise down to like a three minute highlight deal. I'm thinking, I wonder if this guy's monetizing this, but anyway, Conrad super serve your, 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 your audience. And I just don't think it's the hard course. You just, whatever your audience is just super serve them. And that's, that's the way to go. Um, I don't know that. I think it's a no brainer, honestly. I mean, think about just what we've seen in college football. I mean, we're going to move on, but it wasn't that long ago. There were no luxury boxes at college stadiums. Everybody sat their ass on a hot ass metal bench and stood in line to buy a warm beer and piss in a trough and hope he got out of there alive. And now, man, we got big screens and we got our own private toilet and they got waitresses. We got a wait staff in here and there's a buffet. There's a goddamn carving station at the game. Like I took my dad to a game for the first time in like a luxury suite. And there's a dude in a funny fucking hat cutting Turkey. And my dad's like, what's going I thought we were watching football. Like what's happening, but that it's evolved. And the result is people are paying a lot more for those tickets. They realized, you know, they'd pay more if we put that little fucker in a hat over there and gave him a Turkey breast and let him go to town. Like, that those are things that you can do to, to monetize. Yes. And, and now they're doing that, not just for big schools, they're doing that in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yes. Like, like so, this is not you, UCLA or Miami. 
Well, and it, you know what? To 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 dial it kind of back into wrestling, I remember. So we would do uh, at TNA. We would have our live event runs, and this in the in the early days, Scotty. I mean, oh five, oh six, and so Don West would take off Mondays. Um, the accounting would get done on Monday, but Don would come in Tuesday, and he's always would knock on the door and stick his head in. Hey, man, what are you doing for lunch? What are you doing for lunch? Don, I'm going with you today, pal. And we'd come down and Don was so conversational and he's like, all right, here's what I'm thinking. But it would always dial back to Jeff. We've got to overserve these folks. They, all they want is more. You've, you've got them to the building and he would say, no disrespect, but that's how your old man thought. He just wanted to sell him a ticket. I want to go much further about that. And when he laid out, I think I've kind of gone into this. He's like, man, if we can have a hearty party and the hearty party <laughs> was a meet and greet of, of literally, um, you know, Jeff would paint some folks up and all that, but we were selling replica belts. So he wanted the hearty party. He wanted Kurt angle, uh, and Kurt, you know, he was decent on t-shirt sales and, and different things, but man, people wanted a picture with Kurt. So Kurt getting a picture inside the ring, a polar or not a Polaroid, a digital photo after a show, but he, you know, Don wanted to lay out, do a guitar party with Jarrett and sell 15 or 20 guitars at two ninety nine or three ninety nine. do a hearty party over here with a replica belt and we can sell seven or eight of those. They get their face painted by Jeff real quick. And there's a three ninety nine. Uh, you know, so we sell seven or eight replicas and then you do a hundred photos of, with Kurt and this and that. And then he, he even had, uh, Jay, Jay lethal with the macho glasses. I mean, he just kind of had this whole buffet and I'm like, this guy is, I mean, he has gone completely over the top, but I mean, it's star cast it, it, like value added, value added, value added, value added. So that is the way to go. And you're talking about at the Carvin station, whether it's Bridgestone, they're adding a whole nother. Yeah. Lunch is like, it's, 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 it's what our world has truly uh, got into. And I think, you just have to scratch your head and said, why did it take so long? I don't know. I don't know. Well, well, let's talk about something that has taken a long time. It feels like it was announced a long time ago, but this is the last week. And I know we don't normally talk about everything that's happening in WWE land, but I did want to bring it to your attention that I think this Friday is the last SmackDown on Fox. Wow. I think they're going to be moving to USA next Friday. And that's kind of crazy to think that SmackDown is back on cable September 13th, 2024. So that's next Friday show this Friday, the swan song for WWE on Fox. Mm. It was a landmark deal just five years ago when it happened and people could not believe what they were hearing. And when the reality of what was happening, like all the money, the billion dollars that Fox had committed. And we had WWE not on cable because they've ruled cable for decades, but one of the major stations, an NBC, a CBS, a Fox, this marks the end of professional wrestling on broadcast television. And now with streaming, there's a big debate. Does that mean as much as it used to? Well, no. And now with the internet being so accessible in so many areas, you don't have to have cable or satellite. You could just do sling or YouTube TV or a variety of those services, but it is different. You've been around for all of it in the last 40 years. What do you make of pro wrestling coming off of broadcast television? This weekend, Conrad in 2016, me and Arthur Smith were in Fox sports studios and we met with Eric Shanks and a bunch of other names you wouldn't recognize, but Eric, uh, top dog there, Jacob Allman was there. And we, as, as a part of global force pitch, that's when they put us under the holding deal. Obviously that didn't work out, but when the announcement came 
in um what what so that would have been 2018 the announcement made I, I think it was way out but anyway Jacob uh called me and left me a very nice voicemail because uh just internally it was a monumental deal obviously for WWE but also for Fox Sports that you know Super Bowl and MLB and everything that goes with it it was a big jump for them every Friday night they were you know going to own um, you know, Thursday night NFL football for four or five months. Uh, they were going to have wrestling on Friday night, college football, college sports on Saturday, NFL on Sunday. So for a big part of the year, certainly the ad buying part of the year, they were going to own it. It was a big deal on the WWE side, Conrad. Um, the WWE hired this big high powered consulting deal and they came in and understood that, um, there was a clip of uh, me and Billy Gunn, the very first match on SmackDown years and years ago, wasn't it UPN first? Uh, but anyway, so it's bounced uh, uh, around with different homes, but going to Fox and Fox sports and the prestige and one of the big four, uh, networks, just a monster deal. WWE hired this company and it went on for months they interviewed so many people in all different kinds of departments because they really knew that from talent to TV um, to live, of every department was going to be not just kind of affected. The company, in a lot of ways, uh, was going to be split. The producers and agents and t TV that, okay, some folks are going to work Monday and some work on Friday. Now, there's going to be some crossover, but we want to get to a spot where not everybody's doing everything because it's just what a grind and live events on the Saturday. So, I mean, a much bigger deal, I think, internally with both organizations than externally because SmackDown had been, ar been around uh, for a while, but internally on both companies, it was a monster, monster deal. And you, you know, calling how cowherd every day, uh, you know, it was pretty surreal because I've been a cowherd listener for years, but you'd see the kind of the ticker and the trailer and to see, um, different things, uh, on Fox sports, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, to see wrestling advertised. We're talking about bringing it into the mainstream. It was just a big deal, like a really big deal. Uh, I'll never forget, um, uh, the, in Nashville Titans Jags, uh, I was the 12th man for the Titans and I had a SmackDown shirt, uh, given to me and I held it up, uh, on that game because it was going to be starting. I think that was the very first time on a Fox, uh, airtime that SmackDown had been promoted by a wrestler. That's a little, uh, back pocket trivia note there, but no, just a big, big deal. And now here we are, and I'm saying fully integrated into the streaming era because this catapults and everybody knows that you know usa is going to have smackdown on friday but big raw the cable staple has now migrated to streaming they're taking that step so it's big conrad it's really 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 big and i think it's um the next evolution uh of where the business is going because at the end of the day wrestling is compelling content that rates and it does well in numbers. And so I'm curious to see how everything flushes out, but the wrestling business is healthy. And I think this is a sign of it. Well, what else is healthy is the way Jeff is able to maintain and achieve an erection. Or I guess it's achieve and maintain Jeff. You told us before we went live that you were, you were chewing a blue chew. Do you want to stand up and show everybody that one you've been working on? Stand on business, but not on blue chew. <laughs> I mean, I heard that you can stand on business to the point where you can say, look, mom, no hands. Uh, blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in a chewable form. And if you know anything about Jeff Jarrett, that's him. Like he wants to get his rocks off, but he's looking for a deal. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's what trying. I, well, I'm just saying, you know, you like, you love the stroke, but you also want to save money. You know, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a hard on, but if you can get a great hard on at a low, low price, that's right uh, up Jeff Jarrett's alley. And the process is simple. You go sign up at bluetooth.com. You consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. I had it on good authority that Jeff Jarrett was so rock hard or across all of the UK. He was just calling spots left and right. Blue chew tablets are made in the USA prepared and shipped directly to your door. 
and you're going to be going two out of three falls. That's what I hear double J was doing. The best part, it's all done online. That means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line in the pharmacy. You can take them anytime, day or night. So you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. So discover your options at bluechew.com. That's what Jeff Jarrett's doing. He is the king of bumping and feeding, if you know what I'm talking about. Blue Chew wants the entire country rock hard. Maybe it's M-A-H-A, make America hard again. That's what they told me. That's the mission. They will not stop until every man is bricked up like a brick house, until every tent is pitched, until every rod is raised. Discover your options at bluechew.com. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code MYWORLD at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code is MYWORLD. You get your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast and Double J's Wiener. There is only one Conrad Thompson. And he's standing on business, boy. I um, world is only one and one Conrad Blue Chew Reed. Bumping and feeding. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Hot tag for your wiener, bumping and fit. That was. You have unleashed the beast, <laughs> the, the king of the mountain. Come on now. Come get your strokes one at a time. Uh, you know, there was that thing over in Japan years ago where people would line up to be slapped by Antonio and We yeah. should have them form a line with you and they get to decide what kind of stroke do you want? You tell me, try it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bluetooth.com. Use our promo code. My world. Listen, if you know anything about Jeff Jarrett. My man's looking for a bargain and you're going to get more than you bargain for. And so is she or he, we don't judge. Not there's anything wrong with that. Get your ding dong real, real hard. Use our promo code. My world at bluechew.com. Hey, we got to talk about what's happening this weekend. And no, I'm not talking about what's happening on Saturday morning when I want that ass. Cause oh, Alabama yeah. is a betting favorite against Tennessee. I, 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 I don't want to scare you here, Jeff. But I had our, our buddy Dre, the bartender, play as Tennessee. Oh, okay. And I played as Alabama. And I played in Neyland Stadium. And I went up 28 nothing, and he cut it off at halftime. And then I played Coach Rosie. And I hung 84 points on him. No, you did. 84 to 10. No. And, uh, yeah, he was Tennessee, in Tennessee. I was Alabama. I got my work cut out. At, you do. I, uh, I managed to do it for who did I, Oh, Jamie Burns from the office, the mortgage office. He wanted to come get some, I had, ten, I had 10 interceptions against Tennessee that day, 10 interceptions. He, he threw 10, he threw 10. I called all 10 of them. I ran yeah. two of them back. He's from double J he's a ham and egger. He is a ham and egger. I know that, but your old pal who, you know, knows a thing or two about video games. Cassio kid wandered in here. Oh, and he limped out. Now I, I'm not going to lie. I'm susceptible for fumble recoveries. I mean, I'm susceptible for fumbles. Milrow will fumble that ball on you. So I'm telling you my weak spot right now. I'm just giving you a heads up oh because it was close in the first quarter, but after that, it was all gas and it was, a, it was an ass whooping. And this spells disaster for you. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm bringing the Cody angle offense mentality, which is what we go for two every time. No, I'm out. You'll, you'll find out Saturday. I, I assure you, you're going to go. What the hell are you doing last night? As we were, I, watching, risk, I reward. I love that because I'm all gas. I mean, you don't score 80 points in a football game unless that's all it is. Oh, unless you're playing Jamie Burns <laughs> and then, and coach Rosie, coach Rosie caught a monster ass whoop. I was embarrassed. I mean, I wrote, I wrote apology notes. I wrote sympathy cards for both of them. Coach Rosie's terrible. Well, he don't coach, does he? Well, here's what's bad. I thought since he's a basketball coach, we'd just play basketball and he'd stomp me. You know I mean? This dude has been to four championship games. Well, now, I don't, I think he's won the same amount of championship games. He won when he played me in 2k too, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Um, I, I, I wanted to just throw this out there as you're contemplating what you're willing to risk. And how this is going to go. It's not a matter of if I'm going to beat you or not. It's a matter of by how many. Ooh. So, so we put 
line down? Yeah. So I was thinking we should do a betting line. And I mean, what do you think? Four and a half points. You're the home team and, and, and you're a four and a half point dog. So how, what do you, I, I want to make sure I understand this. How many points you giving me? No, I'm not giving you any. Seven. I, I'm not giving you any points. <laughs> seven. I think Dave Silva, did you hear seven clip that for the show? No, sir. no, 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 no. Dave, Dave Silva knows where his bread is buttered. Um, <laughs> so I speak for Dave Silva in this. Uh, getting, Eric Jones calls Conrad eight and a half opening line minus uh, eight and a half. minus eight and a half. I get that. There were a lot of guesses in there. I mean, I've seen 31, 20 suggested a lot, like as a suggestion for the final score. Oh my God. Oh, coach Keith is saying he can. Yeah. You know what? I, I just read in the live chat. I can't believe this is real. That coach Keith is not going to be with us in Chicago. That's disappointing to me. Cause I thought we were going to have a fun time cause we did in he, Tampa, but he, he fears the outlaw. I assume. Well, he's going to be in North Alabama in January. So, you know, anybody can get it, you know, I'll be ready to stomp ass in January too. It'll be fine. Hey, hey uh, serious business though. We should mention that we are on, we are on the short clock here. We're running out the clock for a big AEW pay-per-view almost back to back. I mean, think about what we've had over the last few weeks. We had all out, we had bash in Berlin and now we're back in Chicago, which is like the spiritual home of AEW. And I think there's been six matches announced so far. I don't know if you've got your Twitter machine on, but it looks like they just announced the seventh match. Let's run through some of the matches. Of course, the main event for the AEW world championship, Jack Perry challenging Brian Danielson, a fellow who you hold in really, really high regard. Tickets are on sale now. AEWTIX.com. What do you think is going to happen here with Jack Perry and Brian Danielson? Do you have a prediction? Brian Danielson is like Patrick Mahomes, um, coming off a Super Bowl win by the end of the year, when they figure out all the injuries and work through them and get kind of back into peak performance shape. And I think that's kind of, uh, where, where Brian's at. Uh, he went through a little law there, uh, maybe had a little self doubt in him for him to win the big one. And I mean, the big, big one. Uh, wife and children at ringside swerve, incredible, uh, champ. Uh, and he dethroned him. N- I mean, I mean this ain't nothing stopping Brian Danielson in the foreseeable future. I can't wait to see it because it feels like if this really is Brian Danielson trying to wind down some of his, uh, full-time in ring career, he's looking to prove some points and help make some guys swerve Strickland and Brian Danielson stole the show. It was an incredible performance in Wembley. I expect more of the same here. And I think on the other side, people might be talking about Jack Perry a little differently. Uh, Mercedes Monet is going to be taking on Sheeta for the TBS championship. That might be in the co-main event position. Sheeta, of course, an OG for AEW. Going to be a lot of people paying a lot of attention to this one. I, uh, I think Mercedes Monet continues her winning ways here. What say you? Definitely. I mean, coming off Friday night, uh, in DC, you know, that's one thing about Mercedes is that the accumulation of AEW going to Mexico, going uh, to the Japan events. Um, she's wrestled on dynamite. She's racking up some wins, but I think most importantly for someone uh, in their prime, the cadence of staying on top, you have to stay in the game on a consistent basis. And that's what she's doing. So, uh, she's got her work cut out, but she's not being dethroned. Hey, I need to, uh, take a, a little detour here. I know we were going to run down all the matches and I know I promised you we'd be out of here at a certain time, but something big, some, something big happened over the weekend that maybe wasn't on everybody's radar, but I know it's on mine and yours over the weekend, the NWA held an event in Philadelphia. It was a pay-per-view. And I loved it. It was the 76th anniversary of the, uh, the NWA and they went to Philadelphia, the home of the 76ers. And they did a pay-per-view in the old ECW arena. I love everything about that. But when it was all said and done, the main event featured one of your great close personal friends, a guy who a lot of people know because of your old promotion, EC three took on another one of the mainstays from TNA, the former Braun, the real life, Tom Latimer. What made me think of this is we just saw Camille on screen and I know Camille and her husband, Tom Latimer make their home in middle Tennessee. And 
we both think a lot of them and are so happy for their success. But Tom Latimer, NWA champion. How cool is that, Jeff? Could not be happy or for Tom, the human being. I, I could go into all kinds of well wishes and congrats and a few backstories here and there. But uh, Tom, perseverance. I saw him like really b- briefly. I did a double take. He was backstage at Wembley. And um, man, I'm just happy for him. Um, this business, you never, ever know what life's going to throw at you. Certainly professional wrestling's going to throw at you. But if you stay in the game and really continue to grind, good things happen. And this is a complete and clear result of that. Shout out to Tom and, uh, his lovely bride. I'm so happy for their success. The idea that Camille is going to be, I mean, she was at Wembley and now she's going to be in Chicago and her husband's the NWA world champion. How cool is that? Just uh, a great success story. Super happy for them. And, and, and can't wait to see what's next. Uh, we had another singles match on the card that's been announced for Chicago, getting back to all out this weekend, MJF. A guy who was one of the pillars of AEW, I suppose, taking on Daniel Garcia. Lots of rumor and innuendo about Mr. Garcia. What do you think happens here, man? MJF, one of their top stars, just lost the uh, championship, his American championship, as he called it, the real life international championship to Will Ospreay. Will MJF get back on the winning track against Daniel Garcia, or is Garcia due for an upset? Garcia is due for an upset. I think it's that simple. The proving ground that Garcia currently is in as young as MJF is. And, but he's got a hell of a a statistical run with dates and wins and everything that goes with that. Garcia is a, a young gun climbing that mountain. Um, I think he's at a crossroads. That, that's how, that's how much I think this match means to him. Uh, he gets his hand raised. I think his career goes one way. I think if it doesn't get it raised, um, and I think he knows that more than anybody, I think Garcia has got his work cut out. I think somehow, some way he'll figure out a way, uh, to persevere and win. Uh, upset alert from double J here's something that, uh, a lot of folks are looking forward to Willow Nightingale, a fan favorite taking on Chris Statlander who I know a lot of folks are really, really high on. They're going to be in a Chicago street fight. A friend of the show, Stokely Hathaway has said that he's trying to work with Tony to see if he can get AEW production to just play Chris Statlander's theme, the entire match, like an old school ECW new Jack ass whipping. That would be kind of fun to see Willow Nightingale, get her ass kicked to a soundtrack. What do you think is going to happen here with Statlander and Willow Nightingale? You know what I've learned in the two years I've been there, Conrad? Never bet against Willow. Mm. Never. Never. Uh, I, you know, I, I saw her uh, in the hallway um, in Calgary that day, and she her, had her throwback outfit on to Owen and all that kind of stuff. But I just kind of casually said, hey, champ. And we. I've just learned not to bet against Willow. Chicago Street Fight or, or Chicago Street Fight or no street fight. Um, I think the odds on favorite, if we're going to Vegas and we're going to take it to DraftKings, my gut would say it's on stat, but I don't think you can bet against Willow. I'll go with Willow. We got another fun match coming. I don't know how fun it's going to be, but it is going to be a spectacle. It's a steel cage match with Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page. I know you've had your issues with Hangman. You said in a loud and clear voice on our YouTube at myworldpod.com last week. It's not over in your mind between you and Hangman Adam Page, but you're going to be on the outside looking in as these guys are locked in a solid steel cage. Swerve Strickland, fresh off of an incredible performance at Wembley, but now without his hardware, he blames Hangman Adam Page for some of that, I'm sure. What do you expect to see inside the confines of a steel cage this Saturday night? Two things it's a show stealer. To me, without question, and it's a pick 'em. 
Conrad, I've kind of thought, obviously I'm outside looking in and everything that kind of goes with that. And I can put on my wrestler cap or my promoter cap or my fan hat cap. I don't see Swerve. He has kind of made a name this year of winning the big one. And he was on a roll. And I think the stat was he has beaten nine former world champions or some kind of crazy, impressive stat. But then on the flip side, I don't see Hanger. Um, I don't see him laying down. I, 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 on that one, I'm going to have to go pick him. I think it could go either way. It, it's going to be the show stealer though. Well, there's two more matches left. The last one they've announced before we clicked record today was will Osprey versus Pac, a singles match for the AEW international championship. Will Osprey is the, uh, the internet darling at the moment. What an incredible performance he had with MJF last weekend in Wembley. He's going to be facing another one of his longtime rivals. He's made it pretty clear. He considers Pac at his level and Pac is a day one AEW guy. This is going to be, you said the other one's a show stealer. I think this has got to be up there for my money, you know, between that cage match and here, it's almost a toss up, but I could totally see Pac being the guy to become the next international champion, especially if we were thinking maybe possibly will Osprey might be gunning for that AEW world championship. What do you think happens with the international title? This is going to be something that Dave Meltzer is going to run out of asterisks for. What do you think Osprey and Pac in Chicago? Can't bet against the Billy goat. You just can't. Willie Osprey gets uh, his hand raised. Uh, Pac coming off the emotional win. Trio's champion. I, my guess would be his head space will be uh, not near as dialed in and near as focused as Will. Will is a gamer. Uh, will will get his hand raised. And it's so new, there's not even a graphic for it, but I have it on good authority. Oh, that there is a six man tag that's going to be happening in Chicago. It'll be the young bucks and Okada taking on double J J lethal and Sotnam Singh. And I know all the smart money is coming in on double J. Uh, the rumor and innuendo is he's bringing a pocket full of blue chew and three guitars. (laughs) This winning streak, pal, you got to watch out. It's going to be a hard fault match one way or another. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, listen, this winning streak is alive. I mean, you just over the weekend, I saw you and Jay lethal just walk and run through half of the roster. I mean, private party and, uh, you know, Matt Taven in the bunch, the kingdom, I mean, you just, you're handing out ass whoopings left and right. Is it true that you personally, I mean, that's what I was told is that Jay lethal and, and Sottenham Singh are going to do their best Larry Zabisco and Robert Gibson. And they're going to hold that post up on the side of the ring. And you're going to run through Matt Jackson and then Nick Jackson, and then finish off with Okada, just like that three in a row, stack them up and pin them. That's what I heard. Okada needs a receipt. He took my head off in that casino gauntlet in Wembley. So payback is a bitch. And I'm looking forward to hooking it up with Mr. Okada son. I can't wait until you beat all three and you're really going to need some sort of consolation prize. After I whoop that ass publicly oh, and stop. then I get to shave your wife's head. Like I I've done it to Eric's head twice in our, our ad free shows community. They're tired of it. They're bored of it. Like how many more WWE hall of famers are going to get their head shaved. Can't we shave a woman's head, Bill Dundee style. And boy, I just know in my heart that the queen's going to do what's best for business. She's all business all the time. Well, well I can't wait to you. It's going to be a mute point. All I got to do is just agree, get her to agree. Cause that beard's coming off now. Here's I what's promise. fun to think about to me. You know, I was in the stands. I think it was may of 2002 in Nashville, Tennessee at the Bridgestone arena. And I saw a guy who, who now wrestles as Adam Copeland sit a fella in a, in a, in a barber chair and just take all of his hair off. And I Who's think that, I think that was old Kurt angle. And he showed up a few days later on TV acting like it never happened. And he had a (laughs) wrestling helmet on covering his ears and had the headgear on. He had a little toupee. And I'm thinking with all the advances in technology with extensions and wigs, 
Boy, it sure would be something if we could just shear the queen down and then have her show up on dynamite with those earmuffs on. That would be a YouTube special for sure. Connie. I mean, listen, if you want to see Karen Jarrett, get her head shaved bald, we might be broadcasting live this Saturday at myworldpod.com. I can't believe this is real. I finally get to beat Jeff at something. You guys don't know this, but we did a bench press contest last year. He beat me. We did a 40 yard dash. I'm not going to tell you how bad I beat him, but anybody who's seen us knows I would win a 40 yard dash. And and now we're finally going to be able to have the rubber match with college football, NCAA. And you know, it's just going to be just like Cody's whole life. Tennessee's just going to let the whole family down once again. Oh, aren't they? oh that's stiff. That's all right, Connie. I can't wait. Are you going to, are you going to wear some of your goofy ass orange when I bust you up? Or I mean, I'm going to be strutting in there. I got an orange robe. You better not let Taz see it. <laughs> you have big heat, brother. You think you got problems now? Walk around in an orange robe. Watch what happens. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, we had a lot of fun just talking about the state of wrestling today. I promise you, I really do. I solemnly promise we're talking about the Motor City Machine Gun soon and Kevin Nash and so much more. But so much happened, Jeff. We had to catch up today, and today yeah. was a blast. Thanks for all the time, man. I, I love this. Uh, you, you were right, Val. He said, well, you said, if we get to the topic, but man, we got a lot of ground to cover. Good stuff. This is the kind of episode that's right up my alley. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. If you haven't already, do us a favor. Myworldpod.com is your home for all things Double J. Cruise on over there, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications bell. And buddy, if you'd have done that this time last week, you'd have been able to ask Jeff questions live. Uh, we were so happy to see our buddy, Andrew Dice Clay stop by and ask questions. It tickled Jeff to the point where he was speechless. One of the best, one of the best Twitter followers around. He showed up live, hung out with us, had a blast, asked some fun questions. Hope you'll do the same. Go hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications bell. Myworldpod.com. Y'all it's free. As Jr. says, it costs nothing to look but I'm going to do everything I can to go live. Cause I know through the miracle of Photoshop, Karen's going to act like she didn't get her head shaved this weekend. Beard's coming off. <laughs> going to be shaped up, trimmed up as we head into, uh, the football season. You're going to be nicely groomed, pal. I'm going to tell you now, hypothetically, if this bet really does happen and I lose the beard, I will be broadcasting in a luchador mask until it grows back in. Oh no. I love it. I love it. So long, everybody. We'll see you next week right here on myworldpod.com. Peace. Have I told you what I'm helping people with in my real life? Yeah. I'm helping them save money over at savewithconrad.com. If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Go get yourself a quick quote. Interest rates have improved and people are realizing, Hey, now's a chance to save some cash. And I'm talking to you. If you're still on the fence about buying a house, we can get you out of that apartment tell your landlord to kiss your grits and get you into a brand new house. You can do that with 5% down with three and a half percent down. And yes, there are still no money down options available in 2024. Savewithconrad.com is your first step. We're going to ask you, Hey, where are you now? And where would you like to be? And we're going to get you on a path to fit those short-term goals, but really meet the long-term goal that we all want. And that's to appreciate the American dream. The American dream isn't to give 29% of your gross monthly income every month until you die to some banker. No, you want to own that thing for real, your own piece of land for you and your family, your legacy. And we want to help you get one for yourself at savewithconrad.com. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And maybe maybe you've already got a house, but it'd be nice if you could pay a little less. We're routinely finding a way to help our podcast listeners combine all of their debt. And I mean, all of it, credit cards, personal loans, even car payments. Get it into one low monthly payment. Not only is it a better interest rate, it's also a greater tax deduction, but maybe most importantly, a much cheaper payment. We're routinely helping our podcast listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. But how much can you save? Find out right now at savewithconrad.com. You guys, the housing market's really good right now too. For you folks out there that are thinking of making a change uh, in your overhead or, or your living conditions, uh, now it's not a bad time to make that move. Nowhere better to do it than savewithconrad.com. He's going to save you money. He's going to be honest. And it's like dealing with a friend, an educated friend. And boy, there's a lot of uneducated and unfriendly people in that world. 
Monrick Thompson is not one of them. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Jim. Check out our reviews online. You're going to see we've got more than a thousand five-star reviews. Customer service is what it's all about. We want to be your mortgage advisor for life. So there's no application fee. There's no credit report fee. We just want to talk, man. Hey, tell us where you are and tell us where you want to be. And we'll try to help you get a plan to get there. We want to be your advocate, your humble advocate at SaveWithConrad.com. Attaboy, Connie. Look at those cheeks, ladies. Look at those cheeks, ladies and gentlemen. My God. How could you say no to that, right? NMLS number 2129, Equal Housing Lender. SaveWithConrad.com.